everybody. Welcome to this week's episode. I've got a really special vintage guitar in this case here. Uh, it says it's a Les Paul, but I think we're gonna have to take a look at it and see. But this one comes from the family of the original owner, and I've got uh, a very cool story that goes along with that. And also, it's, it's a very early and rare version of this model guitar, so uh, there's definitely some vintage guitar history to go along with that if you're into that kind of thing. So uh, let's go ahead and check this thing out. And here it is. So this looks like a Gibson SG, right? But you'll see on the headstock here, this one says Gibson Les Paul Jr. So this is a very early SG Jr. model where they still had that logo on the headstock. And as the story goes, uh, it was on there for a couple years and then some people say Les Paul didn't like the SG and so they removed that off the headstock, but um, I don't really know. Maybe you guys know better than I. Uh, this guitar also has a slanted tailpiece like the 1950s Juniors, which, you know, sonically, maybe this does do something a little bit different, but uh, for me, I just like it aesthetically better than the lightning bolt tailpiece that came on the later guitars that's just straight across. Uh, and this guitar is also missing what looks like some kind of vibrola here, uh, but the, the screw pattern seems different than the typical vibrola tailpiece that you would see on these guitars. And I actually have it in the case here, so I'll show you guys. So here it is, it's missing the arm, which I'm trying to locate an original one so uh, I can put this back together and show you guys what it sounds like. But uh, this is a very rare and unique vibrola system that you really only find on the early SG models. And I've never had one of these before, so I'm really interested in getting it working and seeing how it sounds. And what's special about this specific tailpiece on these early SG guitars is there's a uh, famous photo of Carlos Santana at Woodstock in 1969, and he's playing a modified SG Special, and it also has one of these rare maestro tailpieces. You just don't see a lot of these guitars with this specific vibrola, uh, as well as you know being a really early SG Junior with the Les Paul uh, headstock on there. Now there's a, a few other little pieces of memorabilia in this case that I will show you, but uh, I want to first tell you the story of this guitar. So I bought it from the son of the original owner and he reached out and said, um, you know, his dad had just passed away and he really had a ton of vintage guitars, amps, and pedals. And you know, they needed to let go of a couple things to help pay for some expenses. And this guitar really spoke to me and I thought I could tell tell the story of it, which that's really what I what I look for now. So I got the guitar and also a little bit of a of a backstory with Steve, who was his dad, and he was the original owner of this uh, Gibson SG Junior. So I want to put up on the screen here uh, a really cool photo of Steve back in what looks like to me the 1960s when this guitar was basically brand new, and his little band that he's got set up here. Uh, you can see Steve here with the SG Junior, and because this is kind of a rare guitar with a very specific vibrola uh, on it, you know, we know that is the guitar. If this was just a regular SG Junior, you know, there, there's a lot of those, but you can tell that this is that very guitar in the photo. So it's really cool to have that to go along with the guitar. Um, in the case here, I'll show you guys, this came with a, a ticket stub to an Allman Brothers concert at the uh, World's Fair Park uh, 1997. But you know, maybe he was an Allman Brothers fan. And of course, Dwayne Allman and, and his SG, it's kind of a cool connection there. And then also, there was a, a vintage pick in here, and it's, it's hard to see now, it's kind of faded away, but it says Fender Thin, and this is one of these triangle tortoise picks. And I guess these were really popular back in the day, and uh, they told me that Steve, like, specifically used these picks, that, that was his thing, so, um, you know, I think they made these in the 60s, maybe into the 70s. I don't know, but it's it's really cool to see this pick has survived with this guitar after all these years. So also there are a few issues with this guitar that I wanna talk about. And then of course I will play it for you guys. 
Um, on the back here, you will see the factory tuners, uh, Cluson single lines, but also this guitar has one of the worst headstock brakes I have ever come across, unfortunately. And it kind of sucks because it's, it's such a great guitar, but somehow this thing still stays in tune and plays just fine. But when I got it, uh, there was actually a lot of like, I don't know, sort of a clay type material. Um, I don't know if it was Bondo or what, but it was just all over the, the headstock and uh, I had to carefully remove it, which I was able to, but you can see that in the cracks uh, where this neck is broken, there is still like this filler material. It's one of those things where for me, I would just leave it and it may last forever, or you know, you may run into a problem and have to uh, splice some, some wood in there and, and get it solid. But uh, I wanna go ahead and play this guitar for you guys and and let you take a listen. Like I say, despite a few issues, it's actually a an amazing playing and sounding guitar. It's one of the best sounding SG Juniors I've ever played, and I've had a couple that I really loved and regretted selling, so I don't know, maybe I need to keep, keep hold of this one. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, drop a comment down below, let me know what you think of this guitar and the history behind it, and I'll say a few words here at the end. <laughs> Thank you.
All right, guys, thank you so much for watching today. If you wanna help support uh, me putting out these videos, you can just comment and like on the video. That's, that's the best way to do it. It really goes a long way, but I hope you guys enjoyed this guitar and the history behind it. Um, it's, it's a very special one, and uh, I'm, I'm glad I got the opportunity to, to showcase it here and share it with you guys. Uh, you really can't beat the old mahogany and uh, a vintage P90 combination. And I just, I love the simplicity of it, just a volume and a tone. And I'll, I'll give this guitar to friends and, you know, I'll just say roll, roll down the tone or, or the volume just a little bit. It's amazing how the guitar cleans up and you can get lots of, of different sounds out of it. And uh, I think people maybe need to uh, try that out a bit more before stepping on a pedal or whatever, just kind of, you know, you can mess with your volume and tone knob and, uh, go all different places with it, but uh, it has a really fat neck on it. Um, I mean, it's not too deep, but it's that very wide Gibson size neck uh, that people really love, you know, the pre-1965 size necks, and it, it feels really, really good. Um, you know, it probably would benefit from a refret pretty soon, but that might be something I do because this one doesn't have binding on it, so uh, I actually prefer that. So I think that's it for this one, guys. This is the 1962, I believe, Gibson Les Paul Jr. Or is it an SG? I don't know. You guys can let me know. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.